Hi, I'm Liv and welcome back to The Book Nook. Hey guys, so welcome back to The Book Nook. I am here with my new best friend. Look! Some of you would have seen this guy on my Instagram and I saw him in a shop window with an owl and a panda and something else. And I didn't buy him, but I went back today and I bought him. Look at him. He's so cute. I'm not gonna lie, it's not necessarily the most practical mug to drink from. Like, if you want people to see the foxy face, you have to drink from his backside, which is fine. But if, like me, you're more used to drinking with your right hand, you have to contend with the ears. But it's manageable. But he's just so adorable, and I'm loving foxes. So this is my new best friend. I may have possibly texted my mum who's in town and asked her to go and pick me up the owl as well. So, moving on from mug purchases, this is going to be my October wrap-up. Now, I know it's November, but I haven't done a wrap-up in bloody ages. I've got a huge stack here, all the books I read in October, so I'm going to try and race through them as much as I can. Because some of them were quite a while ago, they're not quite as fresh in my memory, but I'm hoping picking them up will refresh me a little. Actually, I've just realised the first few here are actually ones that I read at the end of September. That's how behind I am with the wrap-up. So the first one is History of Wolves by Emily Fridland. Now, I read this because, of course, it was on the Man Booker long list. And indeed, the short list. I'm not really very with it today. So this is essentially about a young girl who lives in a slightly isolated community and then gets friendly with her new neighbours in another sort of house around this lake. And it's very, very weird, very unsettling. I thought the prose was really beautifully done, but it was a bit of a slow one for me. Sort of not enough was happening, and I know that was probably the point, um, but it just seemed to take a while to get warming up, and it seemed to be nearly something a lot of the time, but not quite. And I think having read um, My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent relatively recently before reading this one, I got those similar vibes, but it was kind of always trying to measure up to that one in my head, so it didn't quite hit that one. But I'd say it's a really solid read, definitely worth reading. If you're looking at any of the, the shortlist and thinking, you know, ones that you've not necessarily heard of, this is a debut and I think there's a lot of promise in here, so I'll be keeping an eye out for what Emily does next. Then I read my first ever Stephen King, Carrie. Now, I read this because I was listening to What Page Are You On? podcast by Bethany Russell and Alice Salater. Uh, I don't know why it came out like that. That was weird. And they spoke about this episode, I think, in the first episode, which was Fat Books, and it was mentioned that in the sort of movie adaptations of Carrie, Carrie herself is always played by a slim actress, whereas in the book she is a fat character. And so I thought, you know what, I've never read any Stephen King before, and I was in the mood for something a bit different, so I gave this one a go. Not sure what I was expecting. I guess I was expecting more horror than it was, but I think this is not necessarily one of his most horror ones. It's one of his more sort of supernatural but based in reality ones and I thought it was pretty pretty damn good for a first Stephen King I enjoyed it enough that I would be tempted to read some of his others however all of his others are huge and I'm not feeling huge books at the moment but I may be next year but I will be talking about that in another video then I read this was actually one that I read on the coach on the way to or from, can't remember now, uh, London when I went up to the bookshop crawl with Alice Slater. And that's um, the anthology for the BBC National Short Story Award for this year. Can you see that? There we go. Introduced by Joanna Trollope and you've got Will Eves, Jenny Fagan, Conan Jones, Benjamin Markowitz and Helen Oyemi. Now of those authors, I loved Will Eves, The Absent Therapist and I've got his second one on my shelf, ready to read. I've never read any Jenny Fagan, but I do feel an affinity with her because she did her undergrad degree at the University of Greenwich, as did I. Um, Cunning Jones, I have read Cove. Now, this is one thing I will say about this short story collection. Basically, loved them all. Would... I would struggle to pick a winner. Well, I don't... No, okay, let's try again. I don't think I would struggle to pick my winner if it weren't for the fact that I'm a bit confused about Kynan Jones's story in here. You may remember a little while back, actually, I don't know if it was pre-Booktube, but I read Kynan Jones's Cove, and I absolutely loved that book, and it was essentially a very, very short novella about a guy who is sort of shipwrecked while he's fishing in the middle of a lightning storm because of a lightning storm, and it's all about him just as he is in the middle of the sea. And this short story collection has a short story called The Edge of the Shoal, and it felt like this it's the same story but I can't remember how much of it was left out from Cove into here and I'm just I was a bit confused and the whole time I was reading it I started off reading it thinking 
I've read this before. How have I read this before? So basically it confused... That was my phone. So basically it did confuse me a little bit because I absolutely loved Cove and I think if you told me that Cove was up against all of these short stories as or as novellas, I would have been like, yep, Cove is my winner. But I'm just a bit confused as to, can you do that? How does that work? And I absolutely loved Helen Oyemi's story in here and it's made me want to read her short story collection that I have got and I've still not got around to reading. What is not yours is not yours, that's what it's called. And that's gonna, yeah, prompt me to read that one soon. I've just had a little look on my phone and it shows how behind I am with everything because Kanye Jones is the edge of the shoal one. So there we go. Then another one I read on that same trip is Elemino P by Mark Dunn. Now I'm not gonna talk too much about this one because this is one of my five star TBR prediction books. So I will leave you waiting before I talk about this one. And similarly, I'm gonna leave you waiting with The Fact of a Body by Alexandria. Mazano Lesnovich, why am I doing it this way instead of just holding it like a normal person? Oh. So yes, that's two more off my five star TBR prediction list, so I've only got three more to read. Jasmine Ward's Sing Unburied Sing, Viola de Grado's 70% Acrylic, 30% Wool, and Sarah Moss's Night Waking, so we'll get to those at some point, hopefully before the year is out. Then I read another Man Booker shortlisted book, Exit West by Moshin Hamid. I was somewhat trepidatious before I went into reading this book because I didn't love The Reluctant Fundamentalist. Now that may be because I was reading it and studying it, and for me studying a book always takes some of the enjoyment out of it, but at the same time I didn't love it as a book anyway, so I was a little bit cautious. But I'd heard really good things about this one, particularly from Simon Savage, and I absolutely loved it. I think it was really interestingly done, the characters in there you really connected with, and yeah, absolutely thoroughly recommend this one. Then I read a book that came to work and I thought, ooh, why not, let's give it a go, and that's Transmission by Alex Bertie. Now Alex Bertie is a YouTuber, and this is a book about his transitioning, because he is transgender. Now, I thought this was really bravely done, and quite well written, but I did... I don't know whether because I haven't watched any of his videos, I don't know how much how much is sort of going to be repeated. I don't know how much you'll have got from his YouTube videos that's already in here or isn't in here. Um, so yeah, it wasn't like... I don't want to be mean and this is going to sound mean, but it wasn't like groundbreaking, but I think it was really bravely done. And the honesty in there is really refreshing, but actually the honesty to go, well, I'm going to tell you this much, but I'm not going to tell you this because it's still personal. And I thought that was really, really important to kind of write a book about being transgender and about that process, but without going, you know, yeah, I know you want to know all the details about everything, and here they are. I thought it was really, really nice to kind of go, you know, he's still a person and he's entitled to some privacy and doesn't have to share everything just because he's on YouTube and has written a book doesn't mean he has to share everything. So I thought that was really interesting and did not realise that I think he must be pretty local because there are a couple of mentions of Exeter in here. Then a book that I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on, Elmet, I DNF'd. Yeah. Now, I think it is a book I will go back to one day. But for me, so you can see, this is about where I got to. So pretty much about halfway. I started reading this before I went to Porto, and then I didn't want to take a book with me that I was halfway through, which I think was probably my mistake, but I didn't want to take it with me and finish it. It was, it was, it was a weird thing. I like to sort of start a book on my holiday. I don't like taking one that I'm halfway through. So I didn't take it with me, and... I came back and tried to pick it up again and it was just going too slowly for me and I was getting confused with characters and yeah, it just wasn't for me. But as I say, I think it is one that I will give a go at another time because I have heard that it sort of really starts getting going from about where I where I stopped. We're going to put this one on the back burner for now. I'm going to try and leave it long enough, probably maybe a couple of years, who knows, until I have forgotten what I can remember about it and then I will go back to it. I just realised I actually read The Fact of a Body after that one, because I read that one while I was on holiday, didn't I? And then I had started reading Sarah Baum's A Line Made by Walking, but then again sort of paused on that because I came home and The Book of Dust was out any minute and I sort of prevaricated. So before Book of Dust came out, I read a couple more graphic novels. I read the next two Lumberjanes in the series from where I got up to. So these are three and four, I think. Yeah, three and four. Took me a little while to adjust to the fact that the illustrators have changed, so the style is slightly different, and I'd kind of... You get used to the characters as much as, you know, because it's a graphic novel, you get used to what they look like, so when the illustration changes, it's always a bit, mm, okay. But the same amazing characters, the same warmth, the same humour, absolutely love these, just for a cosy read, you know, that you're going to have a good time. Then, of course, it's The Book of Dust. 
I spoke briefly about this because I had just finished it when I was filming another video, um, but obviously including it in the wrap up and I just adored this book. It's a warm hug of a book. Characters, amazing. Story, amazing. Little Easter eggs in there, amazing. Trying to make all the connections between character names and thinking who they are in the main trilogy and how does that add up, amazing. Just thoroughly, thoroughly amazing. I think I said in the video when I just finished it, and if I didn't, I meant to, so I'm gonna say it here, that you don't have to have read the original trilogy. I don't think, I don't think you need to have read it for this book to just blow you away and give you a hug. Then when I finished that, I hadn't had enough Pullman in my system, so I decided to read Lyra's Oxford and Once Upon a Time in the North. So these are the two little extra ones that were done after His Dark Materials, the original trilogy, to sort of tide you over. So Lyra's Oxford, it deals with after the events of The Amber Spyglass, and Once Upon a Time in the North tells you the story of how Lee Scoresby and Irik met, and it was brilliant. And the most exciting thing about these, as I say, is sort of Easter eggs and making connections with names that are sort of briefly mentioned because they're both presented as little books with kind of extra paraphernalia in there. So with Lyra's Oxford, you've got the globe trotter map and then you've got some like little postcards and bits at the end. And then with Once Upon a Time in the North, you've got A, there's a game in the back, which I will be needing to play sometime. But then this has also got a little note at the end that's Lyra writing to her lecturer about her thesis at um, at Oxford. And I'm not gonna do any spoilers, but yeah, names in there. I got very excited. Then because I was in the mood for more little books to keep myself nice and toasty, and actually I've just remembered I was reading these for the last cozy reading night. This is, oh, I'm so not with it, am I? But the next one I read, again, part of cozy reading night was The Invisible Child and the Fir Tree by Tove Janssen. So these are two Moomin stories in this gorgeous new hardback edition that's been produced for Oxfam. Um, or in connection with Oxfam and the Invisible Child campaign. So the money from this, at least £4, I think it's now gone up to the full four ninety nine. is going to Oxfam to help women and children across the world, disadvantaged women and children. Um, I have actually never read any Moomins before. So it was a bit weird, like, it's weird and I love it. Yeah. Then I finally did get back on to reading A Line Made by Walking by Sarah Baum. So this is another one from the Goldsmiths Prize shortlist. Now, hmm, what can I say about this? I wanted to love this book. I wanted to absolutely adore it and worship the ground it was printed on. In the end, I just quite liked it. Now, there was something about, so for the first half of it, I was having quite a reaction to it and connecting with it quite strongly because it's about a 25 year old girl who has finished uni, doesn't quite know what she's doing and is having some problems with her mental health. And I am a 25 year old girl who had that a little while ago. And so, yeah, I could sort of feel it and it was very close to the bone for the first half. But then the second half of it, for me, it just didn't quite, I don't know what it was, but that connection for me, I didn't maintain the connection to the book. Not to say it's a bad book. It's beautifully written, wonderfully done, an incredible exploration of mental health problems and dealing with your family and sort of feeling like an outsider. So there's nothing wrong with it at all. I think for me, the connection that I had in the initial stage of the book just didn't quite maintain for whatever reason. Um, and that just meant I didn't quite love it, love it, love it, love it. But so far, I think, hmm, no, hmm. I was trying to think if it's my favorite from the shortlist so far, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Speaking of the Goldsmiths Prize shortlist, and speaking of favourites and going in exactly the opposite direction, Will Self's phone DNF'd it. But after about 30 pages, I mean, look, it's huge. I love the kind of fiction that the Goldsmiths Prize does. You know, it's my bag. But I just didn't have the energy all the time, to be quite honest with you. Life is too short for Will Self. There you go, I've just taken my bookmark out of it, that's admitting for definite that I have DNF'd it. Page 32, I was on. It's just very, very male, and from the reviews I've heard, you, if, if you don't enjoy it by 32 pages in, you're just not gonna, so DNF'd it. Which is annoying, because I don't like to DNF a shortlist book, especially one from the Goldsmiths Prize, because they're normally so my thing, but there you go, life's too short. Then, because I needed cheering up from that, I decided to read another book from my five-star prediction TBR, and that was The Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Bythel. 
anyone who follows me on Twitter and, fa and Instagram will have seen, basically, you already know what I thought of this book and whether it was successful on the five star prediction. So, but I'm not gonna talk any more about it until we get to that video. Then the second to last Goldsmiths Prize shortlisted book is the last book that I read in October, and that is Playing Possum by Kevin Davey. So this one's from Arug Press. So this one is a book about a poet who may or may not be T.S. Eliot, who murders his wife and goes on the run and ends up having to stay the night in a hotel in Whitstable. But it's so much more than that. I will say, I'm not sure I got all of it. It's one of those that I, there are so many sort of references to literature in general, uh, art, cinema, history, that I think, uh, you know, I, j I was never going to get all of them. But I thoroughly enjoyed it, and the innovation in this is so confusing but so fun. Because essentially it's written, it kind of flits between, between sentences, between paragraphs, between this, what I assume is a producer of a movie, because he keeps on mentioning the director, somebody on a movie and they're making a movie of this and then it's this guy is investigating um tom or thomas as he's interchangeably called in this as he goes through uh, as, as he as he kills his wife um whether it's an accident or not that's up for you to decide i mean it's pretty obvious anyway and then him going on the run and this whole journey and he's sort of there with him but you know he can't possibly be there with him it's just really really cleverly done and interestingly done and yeah it was it was a wild ride as i say i'm not gonna pretend like i got every reference in there i'm not gonna pretend like i definitely know what was going on half the time but what a ride so yeah that teetering stack there that is everything i read in october although actually it's not because i just realized i did also read uh, the subtle knife and the amber spyglass in preparation for the book of dust coming out i don't know whether i'll still do a philip pullman video we shall see how things go so yeah that is my october wrap up i'm gonna have another little slurp of tea from my new best friend oh i just put my hand in it it's fine it's cooled down enough that it was more of a surprise than hot that's what she said so that's my october wrap up have you read any of them their books have a little chat with me in the comments below about any of those books or any other books or what have you let's just talk books I'm going to go and try and figure out how the hell to take a thumbnail picture of all of that lot. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys.